Morning YouTubers, you crazy people. Well, I've had enough, I need to get out. All this uh, being locked down is all well and good, but it uh, doesn't do a lot for the mind. So I'll come down the canal. I'm gonna uh, hashtag this video, show us your brew. She's basically just go for a walk, do something, make yourself a cup of tea and uh, we'll have a chat about mental health men's mental health come with us for a little adventure because uh, i got my good mate buddy with me bless him as you can see it's nice and quiet a bit muddy Don't bother us because uh, we're going in the water aren't we buds he's got his little buddy pod for the kayak now there's a uh, hot water bottle in there and pretty much that is us, our kayak kit for the day. And this is our lockdown exercise. Come back, see where we go. YouTube you crazy people welcome back to the channel thank you very much for clicking on this vid please give it a thumbs up i would be much appreciated today's vid is uh, a pretty much tag video um, that I volunteered to do really because I liked what it was about and that's uh, show us your brew and this had hashtag started um, with a few youtubers now and it's basically just talk about mental health where you are in the world and saying hello and spreading a bit of positivity I suppose you know as we're all struggling at the moment that's guaranteed and uh, as I've learned in life you just can't you can't lock it all away you got to talk about it you've got to get it out there otherwise you'll just end up in a very dark and lonely place I'm 49 now, I'm quite a positive person, uh, upbeat, you know, I, I try not to let things beat me, but uh, I can honestly say that I've been broken twice in my life, and uh, life has just beat me down to the point where I just didn't know where to go, what to do, how to deal with it, and luckily for me, I'd got people around me that would listen and they helped me through it. The first time life broke me mentally was uh, when we lost our daughter nearly 24 years ago now and I thought there was no getting back from that mentally it just I was fine until the day I carried a little coffin and it broke me just totally broke me as a person and the only way I got through it was, like I say, people around me and talking about it and talking to other people about it that I didn't know and never bottling it up even if it made other people feel awkward at times when it would come up in conversation you, you, you've still got to get past their awkwardness and just get it out get it out, get it out of your mind, get it out of your system don't overload it and then the second time was uh, not so long ago, 2018, after my accident. And I've uh, been on switch for high for the last decade. And this just totally broke me physically as well as mentally. And yet again, a very special person in my life that got me through that, and that was my wife. Well, I just didn't want to get in the wheelchair. I, 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 I've had this accident, I'm living in my lounge, and this new wheelchair comes, and I don't want to get in it. My life's over as far as I'm concerned, and it wasn't. But mentally, as far as I'm concerned, it was. And I sank into a very, very dark, low place. And my wife, being a smart cookie, got me this little man. Hey, buds. And he saved me. <laughs> you might think that sounds stupid, but he really did. Um, 
he brought me out of that dark hole and gave me purpose and a reason and that's why we're together and he's still my carousest dog now I find I have to take him um, well, before we were locked down to crowded places I would have to uh, I would have to have him with me um, purely because um, I was finding it really hard to deal with people's stupidity and found myself on punching Buddy in the face <laughs> uh, but Buddy here you know he has that calming influence and uh, pretty much just keeps me yeah uh, keeps me sane bless him so that's twice in my life I can honestly say that you know oh, I was broke I just think it's a point in your life where life overloads your brain and you just sink to a place where you think you can't return from unless you talk about it you won't so that's my best bit of advice is firstly talk about it and secondly try to prevent it find your happy space and if you can't find your happy space then you need to talk to somebody that will help you find your happy space so that's what this video is pretty much about it's just about saying hello you know you're not alone in the world you're not the only one you just find it hard and uh, for me it's not so much my mental um, health that bothers me it's my daughter's um, because she's really struggling bless her she's 14 she's supposed to be living the life of a teenager and before this pandemic she was very confident very bubbly very outgoing um, she was you know she loved dancing she was uh, she went to a, a dance school she did dance shows dance competitions and now she's this shy reserved quiet sad looking little character that just doesn't resemble my daughter sometimes which for me is heartbreaking so my mission at the moment is to make sure she's okay as well as myself so I've come up with some walking activities to get her out of the house more um, today she's at school I say she's at school starts at 9 o'clock she's in a bedroom in front of the laptop she has 15 minutes for lunch and then she's back in front of the laptop till four o'clock in the evening and yesterday it just broke her she ended up um she just you know came up to me tapped me on the shoulder said dad can i have a word and i said yeah what's up she says can i have a cuddle and that cuddle was enough to release everything she'd been botting up for weeks and she cried and she cried and she sobbed a little heart out which for any parent is heartbreaking in itself um, but that's her shouting out for help and hopefully because I always tell her never bottle it up you know and I think she bottled it up a little bit too long this time and uh, that's where we are so anybody if you feel you're struggling ask for help don't cut yourself off it's just you'll just end up in a darker place so what to do well get out do something do something you wouldn't normally do go and get that bike out of the garage that's <laughs> been in there for 20 years because you're going to do some exercise you bought one you parked it up you know find walks that are close to you that you've never done before believe me you'll find places on your doorstep you didn't know existed because normal life would never give you the opportunity to find them so you know, look at this, beautiful. Hey buds, don't you think so? Um, the original guy that started it, stipulated, doesn't mind what you built your cup of tea with. Um, whether it be a fuel stove, gas stove, wood burning stove, just get out, have a cup of tea. And that uh, is pretty much the hashtag of this video, you know. And uh, I'm going to nominate three people. I'm going to tag you because um, I'd like to see what they come up with. The first person that I'm going to nominate is the primitive one, as it was his channel that saved me mentally last year on the first lockdown and into the second lockdown because um, I found his channel and it's what made me buy this kayak. 
and I've not looked back since. I did my first wild camp on the canal and absolutely loved it. Uh, so yeah, first one, primitive one. Second person I'm going to nominate um, is called Another Hipster and he's pretty much, he likes a bit of camping and he loves his motorcycle and considering motorcycles are um, my other passion, I'm going to choose Another Hipster. And my third nomination, and final nomination, is going to be another motorcyclist because he absolutely cracks me up, makes me smile, makes me feel good about life, and that is Helmet Head. As you can see now, we have uh, Buddy Pod 3, which is his kayaking Buddy Pod, which he's absolutely loving today. Normally he tries to get in my jacket because he's don't like his little feet, he's getting cold. So, he's got his pod here. And in the bottom, he's got a lovely hot water bottle, which is keeping his little tootsies lovely and warm. Hey, bum. Hey, buds. And uh, when I stop and have a cup of tea, which I think we're going to do soon, and uh, I shall replenish his hot water bottle. So as many uh, people know that follow Buddy on Facebook, he had his nuts chopped off about four months ago. And we thought, well, that's that, you know. I don't worry about that no more. And, uh, anyway, his wife, Bebe, she's coming to see him, isn't she? And I came in, and there he is, locked together. So, how does this happen? Huh? You've got no nuts. And I'm like, no, this can't be happening. Surely. The dogs with no nuts still do it. I don't get it. <laughs> we chopped them off so he didn't do it. So we're hoping that he's had no dormant sperm lying in his channels. He's got no nuts, but he's now been locked to a oh, good four or five times. Can't stop the randy little bugger, isn't it? You've got no nuts, but you still love doing it, don't you? So I've had that to contend with. And uh, also um, Jax, who's fell in love with Bebe because she's in season, he knows he's got no nuts. So he's fell in love with her now and he's just an absolute nightmare because he's constantly trying to shag the air. So I'll be glad when all this is over and we can get back to some sort of normality. Hey, what do you reckon? I think it's time for a brew. And that there, buds, looks as good a spot as any, mate. Do you not think? You can go and relieve yourself. Have a sniff. Try not to get in trouble, hey.
very friendly, is it? <laughs> Are you not impressed? No. Are you the only dog, dog allowed on the canal? Is that what it is? Huh? Are you the only dog allowed on the canal? You big bad rottweiler, you, aren't you? Where are you going now? Where are you going now? You gonna fall in? <laughs> so you want to sit on my lap? Really? What about your nice warm little pod? Yes, your nice warm little pod. A fucking squirrel.